so uh, any comments can be made after this talk because uh, we are running little short of time i will deal with some recent trials which have an impact on our clinical practice okay. to begin with i start with a complete trial here the patients with stemi patients with multifacial disease after a successful pci to the culprit lesion they were randomized to a complete revascularization arm where routine stage pci of all suitable non culprit lesions were done versus culprit lesion only revascularization where nothing more is done they were they all received the guideline directed medical therapy and the median follow up was 3 years so there were two co primary endpoints a composite of cv death or new mi or composite of cv death new mi or ischemia driven revascularization slide why the slides are not changing jignesh sir just click on the down arrow it is not coming that's what i'm doing so you can click on the screen okay but right both the co primary endpoints were uh, lower in the complete revascularization arm and the kaplan meier curve starts diverging from from pretty early so in stemi and multifacial cad routine non culprit lesion pci with the goal of complete revascularization reduce the cardiovascular death or new mi by 26% nnt is 37 and reduced cardiovascular death new mi or idr by 49% nnt is 30 the benefit was similar in non culprit lesion pci during the index hospitalization and several weeks after the hospital discharge median was 3 weeks the second trial which i picked up is the culprit shock trial though it is little old but this still has a very important relevance ami and cardiogenic shock having multifacial disease they were randomized to pci of the culprit lesion only versus immediate multifacial pci the primary endpoint was the composite of death or severe renal failure leading to renal replacement therapy within 30 days looking at the composite primary endpoint of death and renal replacement therapy it was less in the culprit lesion only pci and it was more in the multifacial pci the relative risk of death was also less in the culprit lesion only pci and the relative risk of renal replacement therapy was also less hence a patient with multifacial disease coming with stemi and cardiogenic shock only culprit lesion pci should be done initially later on one can stage the non culprit lesions but initially culprit lesion only pci is recommended in the ischemia trial the patients with angina and documented ischemia moderate to severe in various stress tests they were randomized to an invasive group versus a conservative group three fourth of them had ct coronary angio and many of them had earlier coronary angiogram so the coronary anatomy was known in the most unprotected left main was an exclusion criteria of the invasive group 80% were revascularized with pc were revascularized three fourth of them with pci and one fourth with cabg and 20% were not revascularized because of the unsuitable anatomy the primary outcome of cv death mi hospitalization for unstable angina heart failure or resuscitated cardiac arrest was similar in both the groups major secondary endpoints of cardiovascular death or mi was again similar in both the groups cardiovascular death was similar all cause mortality was similar and net clinical benefit was also similar in both the groups hence initial invasive strategy showed no added benefit in cardiovascular risk reduction 
over a median of 3.3 years when compared to initial conservative treatment. Coming to the field of the platelets, in the ICER REACT 5 trial, ACS patients undergoing invasive evaluation were randomized to receive ticadrilor or prasugdril in both the settings of STEMI as well as non ST elevation ACS. The primary endpoint was a composite of three point MACE at 12 months. Looking at the primary endpoint, it is much significantly lower in the prasugrilla. It was described, it was uh, primary endpoint was more with ticagrilla than prasugrilla, and this difference is statistically significant. Looking at the components of the primary endpoint, death was less with prasugral, MI was less with prasugral, and definite stem thrombosis was also less with prasugral. Major bleeding was similar, and a similar result was seen in all the clinical settings, be it STEMI, NSTEMI, or unstable angina. In the twilight trial, Ticagrillar with or without aspirin in high risk patients after, P, after PCI, patients were undergoing PCI and having at least one ischemic or bleeding risk factors. They were given DAPT with Ticagrillar and aspirin for three months. They were randomized for further 12 months to receive either DAPT with Ticagrillar and aspirin or Ticagrillar plus placebo. Primary endpoint was the first occurrence of. BRC type 2, 3, or 5 bleeding, and between randomization and the one year in a time to event analysis. Key secondary endpoints are first occurrence of death from any cause, non fatal MI or non fatal stroke. Ticagrelar monotherapy was found superior to 12 months DAPT in reducing the bleeding event. So, bleeding was less with Ticagrelar monotherapy. But it was found to be non inferior to 12 months DAPT in preventing the ischemic events. In the Augustus trial, patients with atrial fibrillation with ACS or those who are undergoing PCI within two weeks and planning to have P2Y12 venuators for six months, sorry, they were randomized in a two by two factorial design to apixaban or vitamin K antagonists, and aspirin or matching placebo. Primary outcome was again major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding. Secondary outcomes was death or hospitalization and composite of ischemic events. Bleeding was less with apixaban than VK. Bleeding was more with aspirin versus placebo. There was less death or hospitalization with apixaban than vitamin K antagonist. There was similar incidence of ischemic events, apixaban versus VK and aspirin versus placebo. So the investigators concluded apixaban plus P2Y12 inhibitor is superior to VK plus P2Y12 inhibitor for bleeding complications with similar rates of ischemic events. Addition of aspirin to either groups resulted in more bleeding without added ischemic benefit. Coming to the field of the lipids, aliracumab and cardiovascular outcomes after acute coronary syndrome or the ODC outcome trial. Here, post ACS patients on high intensity statin and at least one lipid entry criteria met that is either LDL is above 70, non HDL above 100, or APOB above 80. They were randomized to receive aliracumab subcutaneously once in two weeks versus matching placebo. The primary efficacy outcome was time to the first occurrence of coronary heart disease death or non fatal MI or fatal or non fatal ischemic stroke or unstable angina requiring hospitalization. Follow up, median follow up was 2.8 years. Aliracumab was given in 75 or 150 milligram dose subcutaneously once in two weeks, targeting an LDL value of 25 to 50 milligram per day. There was decreased incidence of MACE, MI, and 
ischemic stroke there was decreased rate of all cause mortality and alirecumab was found to be safe and well tolerated over the duration the maximum benefit accrued in those patients who had a baseline ldl above 100 coming to the reduce it trial i will only discuss the main reduce it trial patients with established cardiovascular disease or diabetes and other risk factors who had been receiving statin and having a fasting triglyceride of 135 to 499 and ldl of 41 to 100 later on this entry criteria was changed to triglyceride levels 200 to 499 LDL remained the same. They were randomized to receive two grams of ecosap and ethyl twice daily versus placebo. The primary endpoint was a composite of CV death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, coronary revascularization, or unstable angina. The key secondary endpoint was a composite of CV death, non-fatal MI, or non-fatal stroke. Median follow-up was 4.9 years. the primary endpoint was significantly less in the ecosapent ethyl group the key secondary endpoints were also less in the ecosapent ethyl group there was there are some reports that there was more atrial fibrillation or flutter in that particular group so in conclusion it is mentioned that in patients with elevated triglyceride despite use of statins risk of ischemic events including cardiovascular death was significantly decreased with 2 grams of ecosap and ethyl twice daily for suspected coming to aspirin in primary prevention we had three trials arrive aspri and ascent in all the three trials one thing was common there was increased bleeding with aspirin versus placebo if you summarize this thing in moderate cv risk or elderly there was no ischemic benefit seen with aspirin but there was increased bleeding as in arrive and aspirin in ascent trial in diabetic patients there was some ischemic benefits but it was offset by increased bleeding complications the dapa heart failure trial has been adequately explained earlier by dr shubhra banerji i'll just touch upon the main point 4700 plus patients with nyha class 2 3 or 4 heart failure and an ef below 40 they were randomized to receive dapa glyphosate 10 mg once daily versus placebo in addition to the recommended gdm the primary outcome was the composite of worsening heart failure or cardiovascular death the results was astonishing it was an event driven analysis after a median of 18.2 months primary outcome was significantly less with dapa arm death from cardiovascular cause was less death from all cause any cause was also less and findings in patients with diabetes were also seen in those without diabetes this is the kaplan meier curve of the dapa heart failure trial the primary outcome and the hospitalization for heart failure we can see the curves diverge from pretty early and it shows that there is an cardiovascular death and all cause death was also lower in the dapa glyphosate arm the victoria trial has has also been discussed by dr shubham banerji but i just touch upon in patients with chronic heart failure nyha 2 to 4 ef below 45 on gdmt and had recent heart failure hospitalization or iv diuretic use when they become stable it, that is defined by sbp more than 100 and of iv diuretics for 24 hours were randomized to verisigvat target dose 10 mg per day versus placebo <laughs> this was <laughs> an ischemic then even driven analysis and it was followed up for 10.8 months in high risk population of heart failure 
Verisigward was significantly more effective than placebo in reducing the composite of endpoint of CV death or heart failure hospitalization. Primary event reduction was 4.2 per 100 patient years. NNT to prevent one primary event is 24. There was no significant change in all cause mortality. This is the last trial I will touch upon the partner three trial. In patient in low risk patients with aortic stenosis were randomized to TAVR using a Sapien 3 valve versus SAVR. The primary outcome was all cause mortality, stroke, or re hospitalization related to the procedure valve or heart failure at one year. You can see that primary endpoint is significantly lower in the TAVR arm, 8.5% versus 15.1% in the SAVR arm. The conclusion was among low risk patients with aortic stenosis, TAVR was superior to SAVR at preventing death, stroke, or re hospitalization at one year. It was associated with a lower incidence of stroke and a similar incidence of permanent pacemaker compared with SAVR. These are the one liner conclusions. I think we can go without it. Thank you very much for your patience here. I think thank you, Dr. Guha, sir. A wonderful presentation of the most, uh, I, I always say a few trials, very controversial trial, like ischemia trial. And I think the message is very clear. Don't touch the coronaries until you are quite symptomatic. Uh, do you agree with that or not? Uh, I always Fully. quote like this, don't touch coronaries until you are class 3 or 4 symptomatic. Am I correct or not saying this quote? Yeah, I believe in that philosophy. And second important thing, you see in all the statin trials, if you see that mortality of all the statin trial increase in the day you survive is not more than 10 days. Now, primary prevention, there's a meta-analysis which says that taking statin prolongs your life for three days only. But this much high dose statin with lot of so called unexplained complications. So, do you still believe that giving lowering LDL to 30 will make you live more than five years if you don't give statin, or you just increase life by five days to seven days with all these cost and burden on a society? Uh, we don't have the results yet. Let the Orient trial results come up fully. Perhaps something can be said after that. But till that time, it is a conjecture that inclusion is perhaps going to increase the longevity. But what is the quantum of that? We exactly do not know. And my third last question. What is your recommendation in multi-vessel PCI during acute MI? You have given two contrary trials. What it, you believe at present should be the... Uh, Final say by the experts. Should you touch? Should you not touch? Uh, they are not exactly contrary or contradictory. The issue is in a patient of STEMI, when the patient is coming, primary PCI is mandatory. You open up the culprit vessel. If the patient is stable, not yet, having good hemodynamics, have another additional lesion which is not very complex, can be easily dilated and stented, you go ahead with that. But if you feel that there is any complexity, delay the procedure by a couple of days. Let the patient be stable, then take, take up the patient and do it. That is in with any not in shock, in failure. But a patient coming with cardiogenic shock, that these are very sick patients. Earlier recommendation was complete revascularization. But by that, what happened was we had a lot of renal failure and increased number of deaths, which has been very amply shown in the top trial. Go to the culprit lesion, leave aside everything, come back. 
let the patient improve after the patient improves you can do it in a staged manner i think you have given a very wonderful answer for the audience and uh, i think this is the thing which i also accept and uh, do in my routine practice don't touch if uh, you see it's a little bit complicated thank you dr dev sir you please unmute yourself dr dev he is unmuted he is not audible you are not audible sir dr dev sir you are not audible ah okay. no sir you are not audible you are not audible jignesh just see what happened <laughs> sir he can listen to us sir dr dev can listen to us i will just tell him why, but he is not audible his audio has been loaded sir everything he is not audible he is not at all audible sir yeah. sir i'll ask somebody to uh, connect with him i think he should uh... <coughs> yeah having technical glitches today mr jignesh no sir not at all uh, sir dr dev is logging from the mobile we will have to call up and check sir Uh, Rishi, your comment. Rishi, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was also about to ask the same question. That uh, I mean, these were contradictory views. That when an ischemia trial, yes, and all of us believe this. That uh, uh, even if the lesion is ischemic but not heavily symptomatic, then we should not touch it. But on the other hand, the complete uh, PCI trial in which in a in a pci setting in a primary pci when we have done the culprit artery then we are saying positive results when we are touching you know asymptomatic uh, lesions in the other vessels so this seems to be a two contradictory sort of views uh, and how do we in in one line if we have to say during primary pci should we or should we not do the non culprit lesions howsoever juicy it may look like what what will be our answer to the audience here in the primary pci if the lesion the non culprit lesions are not very complex i i told exactly that thing if it looks juicy one can try that thing there but if there is any amount of suspicion about that lesion any complexity why not st stage it after do it after a couple of days after making the patient stable because this this particular trial has shown us that there is no difference in the benefit if you do it in the same setting versus if you do it after a median of 3 weeks so you have a sufficient time there nothing happens within that period so why not stage it and for the safety and the betterment of the patient and so for the other part of it that is in culprit shock culprit shock is a totally different ball game these sick patients cannot tolerate this excessive dilord and excessive procedure related problems so only culprit lesion uh, should be done and one should come out and and i think the very good trial that we have discussed today is the twilight trial um, it, it's a it's a brilliant trial actually that instead of dual antiplatelet shifting on to aspirin they are saying shorten the duration of the dual antiplatelet and continue with ticagrelor for for one year and probably it will give us better ischemic outcomes and lesser bleeding as compared to so this is another um, philosophically paradigm changing trial so i think twilight this is this is a very interesting and important trial i agree but here the dap duration was not shortened first 3 months dapt was given then for another 12 months this was randomized to either ticagrelor versus dual but nobody utters a single word about the icer react 5 yes. i am surprised because that that has a very good volume good number of patients where prasugrel was compared with ticagrel prasugrel is much cheaper now and prasugrel was found to be superior in all counts the bleeding was similar my ischemic events were less 
stent thrombosis was less. So why not we go ahead with prasugrel rather than ticagrel? That is a million dollar question. Perhaps it has some uh, uh, business angle to, to it. So <laughs> it is difficult to discuss and difficult to get the right answer. Dr. Dev, will you have, have any comment? Okay, Dr. Dev, sir, aapka, your mic is not working. Probably if you are uh, by your phone, disconnect it and do directly from the phone. It will work. Is it working? Uh, now, now, it now, is, it is now it is audible. Okay, fine. Look, regarding the trials, I have some, I have some uh, ideas of my own. Because wh when I interpret any trial, I want to see whether it is a randomized placebo control trial or not. Then I want to say who is the sponsor of the trial. Then whether it is what is the number of cases being studied, whether in mega trial or not. So, and and from which center the trial is coming? Because there are few centers where the results are randomly manipulated. So I want to know the integrity of the persons who are doing the trial and integrity of the results. So, so before interpreting any trial, I want to know the details. Of this, whether it is randomized placebo control, who is the sponsor, who is what, which center it is coming, and what is the number of cases being studied. This thing must be told first. Be, be after that, the study should result should be. Should, sir, should so very true, sir. You are hundred percent the plateau trial. There's a lot of controversy with ticagrelor only with single large trial. Ticagrelor has become the wonderful drug, and all the positive result are from Poland only. In USA, yes, yes. there is neutral result from India. So, and yes. there is a writ petition in USA federal government regarding this trial. So, you are absolutely right. A particular center gives so much positive data that other center who are doing honestly, their data is equalized and it, it tilted everything. Okay. Uh, Rakesh, uh, I think uh, our time is over. Uh, Thank you everybody for their comments and for sharing the session.